In this video, we will observe difference between on-policy and off-policy methods by comparing Q-learning and SARSA in an experimental way. There is a lot of modern reinforcement learning algorithms that give much more superior results than these two methods. But new algorithms often involve a lot of machine learning techniques and they are complex. So, it is difficult to tell pure difference of on-policy and off-policy methods by comparing modern reinforcement learning methods. Whereas classic Q-learning and SARSA are represented by a simple formula. So, it should be easier to understand difference of on- and off-policy methods. Two problems are considered in this video. The first one is finding a path from start to exit in a maze. Q-learning and SARSA methods are applied to 6x6 and 8x8 mazes. The second problem is cliff walking. The shortest path along the cliff must be determined, while falling into a cliff must be avoided. For experiments, a PyQT5 based program is used. Cliff walking also can be executed using ROS2. But using ROS2 will take much longer simulation time. Finally, a brief comparison of Q-learning and SARSA performance for these problems is provided. In addition, parameter setting for SARSA and Q-learning equations are discussed. Python programs can be downloaded using the links provided in the video description. There are two programs. One for maze and another one for cliff walking simulation. In the maze program, when the agent bumps into the wall, it stays at the same position but receives a negative reward specified in maze description file. In the cliff walking problem, stepping into a cliff ends the episode and agent is returned to the starting point. Resources folder contains structure files for simulation. These files are CSV files containing reward values for reaching cells. To begin simulation, execute the reinforcement learning simulator PI file. After the program starts, a GUI window will be displayed. Firstly, press the import maze file button, then open the resources folder and select one of the maze files. After a maze file is selected, it will be displayed in the simulation window. The green cell is the goal. Reward for reaching the goal is set to 3. Red cells denote walls. Bumping into the walls is accompanied by a negative reward of minus 2. Blue cells form pathways. Rewards for blue cells are set to 0. Interested user can easily create new maze files of arbitrary dimensions. However, the above reward values must be preserved, otherwise, editing source code of the program will be necessary. In case of maze problem, the starting point is the upper left square of the maze. To run cliff walking simulation, use files inside the cliff folder. Maze file for cliff walking simulation contains 12 by 12 cells. Starting point is in the left bottom corner. Red cells denote the cliff. The penalty for falling off the cliff is minus 20. The reward for reaching the goal, that is the green cell, is 3. Two types of cliff walking tasks with pathway reward 0 and pathway reward minus 0.1 are considered. The task is to reach the green cell with the shortest path without falling off the cliff. After the maze file was imported, simulation can be executed by pressing the start button. At that moment, simulation parameters and calculation method must be specified. Default values for simulation parameters Epsilon, Alpha and Gamma are displayed in the simulation window. User can change the default values using spin boxes. Calculation method is specified by selecting one of the radio buttons, Q-Learning or Sarsa. To run the ROS version of Cliff Walk, 
please download the QL Sarsa simulation raw zip file and extract it into your home directory. Move the cliff folder into the gazebo models directory. For the required packages for ROS2 and Gazebo, please see this tutorial. To run Gazebo, please execute the ROS2 launch robot Gazebo main launch XML file. After a gazebo world emerges, run the reinforcement learning simulator Pi script. Select one of cliff files. Change the calculation method radio button to ROS and push the start button. The robot will begin to move. Note that ROS and GUI are working in the same thread, so we cannot operate GUI during Zebo simulation. Now let's see theoretical difference of SARSA and Q learning. There is a lot of literature on the internet describing these two methods, so here we will only review them briefly. Here is an equation of SARSA. SARSA chooses the action using the Epsilon Greedy policy with respect to the action value function. Epsilon Greedy is a simple method to balance exploration and exploitation by choosing between exploration and exploitation randomly. The Epsilon Greedy, where Epsilon refers to the probability of choosing to explore, exploits most of the time with a small chance of exploring. Sarsa receives a reward and makes a transition to the next state to make another Epsilon Greedy action. In other words, the reason that Sarsa is on policy is that it updates its Q values using the Q value of the next state and the current policy's action. It estimates the return for state action pairs assuming the current policy continues to be followed. Here is an equation of Q learning. Q function is updated using two actions. The first is chosen by the Epsilon Greedy policy. The second action maximizes action value function. In other words, Q learning estimates total discounted future reward for state action pairs assuming a greedy policy was followed despite the fact that it's not following a greedy policy. Now let's see results of our experiment. Firstly, a 6x6 six six maze problem was solved using the default parameter values. Figure 1 shows results for Q learning method, and figure 2 for SARSA method. The arrows in the figures point to the direction of the largest Q value increase and the route from start to goal cells is shown by the green line. Both methods found the pass from start cell to goal cell successfully and the depicted results are identical. In figures 3 and 4, Number of steps performed to solve a 6x6 six six maze task are compared. Number of episodes in one run is 100. Results for 13 runs are shown. We can see that Sarsa uses less steps compared to Q learning. For each run, number of steps is different because with epsilon equal to 0.1, 10% of steps are random and they are different for different runs. In previous simulation, we used a relatively low value of the learning rate equal to point to do. But what happens if we increase alpha? Would not simulation go faster with larger learning rate? Number of steps used by Q learning is depicted in figure 5. As we can see, number of required steps did not decrease. It even increased in several cases. Regarding SARSA, it fails to find pass from start to goal. Two examples of the failure are shown in figure 6. From these results we can see that too big learning rate does not necessarily increase learning speed, and in some cases, it even may cause negative effect on learning results. Now, 
we will compare how Q-learning and SARSA behave in solving the cliff walking task. Firstly, a cliff walking task with pathway cell reward zero is considered. For the cliff walking task, we use 300 episodes per run. Simulation results are depicted in figures 7 and 8. Neither Q-learning nor SARSA succeeded in determining the shortest path from start to goal cells, although Q-learning path is closer to shortest. Note that since pathway cell reward is zero, the final reward does not depend on path length. Next, Q-learning and SARSA methods are tried for a maze with small negative pathway rewards of minus 0.1 and a default set of simulation parameters. Simulation results are depicted in figures 9 and 10. Now, to obtain the maximum reward, the shortest path from start to goal must be determined. Q-learning succeeded in determining the shortest pass while the pass calculated by SARSA is not the shortest. From this result we can conclude that in case of this problem, SARSA could be more practical. Because SARSA considers possibility that agent may take random action and fall from the cliff, SARSA avoids going along the edge of the cliff. Next, we perform the cliff task simulation with epsilon equal to zero. As shown in figures 11 and 12, both Q-Learning and SARSA succeeded in obtaining the shortest path from start to goal cells. Number of steps employed for solving the cliff walking task is compared in figure 13. From these results we can conclude that if epsilon is set to zero, that is because greedy policy has been used, Q-Learning and SARSA derive the same path. 